Okay, we're going to try to find the intersection or intersections of these two equations. And the reason I'm saying equations, if you look at this one, this one is a function, isn't it? This is going to be a parabola, isn't it? It's going to be a minimum, I'm sorry, it's going to be a maximum parabola with a um, y-intercept at 19. But what is this? This is a circle. So I'm saying if you think about it, Don, circles aren't functions because they won't pass the vertical line test. So what we're going to have to do is trick our calculator. So today's lesson, frankly, is on tricking your calculator into doing what you want it to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some, I'm going to let my calculator do some uh, more work for me. So I'm going to go to this. Um, so if you'll go to insert calculator, please. And then we're going to use the solve function on your calculator. So if you can hit S O L V E solve, open the parentheses. With the with the circle, that's the one that's going to be a little bit more difficult. So that's the x squared plus y squared. Is everybody with me? I know we're doing a video, but it's much the video is much less important to me than you understand. So stop me anytime to tell me if I'm okay. Uh, equals what do we say? Twenty five, Dylan. So it equals 25. And then look, this is what I'm going to do here. Comma, remember that means in terms of, in terms of y, in terms of y, close this parenthesis, and we're going to get a really kind of creepy answer there, aren't we? And the reason that you're getting this answer, Mr. Carls, is that this is not a function, so it's saying this or the other thing, right? But if, so if you look at this, it says here, so y is either the opposite of 25 minus x squared, and it gives you this, or it's the square root of 25, the positive square root of 25 minus x squared, isn't it? And I'll show you what happens if you don't mind. Uh, on the other one, can we agree we don't really have to solve, we don't have to solve that using our calculator, do we? What was it? What was the equation? All right, so we can just solve that. Y equals negative x squared plus 19, is that what we would get? Is that all right? Okay, so let's try that a little bit. Um, so this going to go here and insert, and it does make it a little bit tricky. So go back to your calculator, insert graphs here. So I'm just going to insert this graph, and I'm going to put in the first function. But look, Dale, I'm about to put it in twice because that's what it said. The, the first one that we use our calculator to figure out, it said that it is right equals. So here's control square root sign right here. It was negative x squared, right? Plus 25, is that right? That was one of them, wasn't it? Right? And then we hit enter here, and then we get that creepy looking circle. Did I use the right circle? No, I mean, did I use the right equation, though? Yeah, we used the right equation, okay. Uh, and I heard you, Dylan, <laughs> you said we used half circle. And we did, because that's what it's saying, right? If it if it put the whole circle in, then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, would it? And that's what the problem is here. This thing doesn't look very circular, does it? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Does it look oblong to you? No, it looks circular? Okay. Something about... So control... So here, I'm, this is the opposite sign right here, Dylan. So all it's going to do is take this. It's going to give me the opposite of what I got before. I'm going to take negative x squared, that's what I had on the first one too, look, plus 25, right, plus 25, and here the calculator is actually pretty cool, but it's actually reminding us that, that this is not one singular function, is it, and then the second uh, equation we had was y equals, is it negative x squared, right, plus 19, is that right, We could adjust this screen if you want to, and Mr. Carls, we could uh, really adjust this, but we don't care. Why don't we care about what's up here? Yeah, we're looking for the intersection. We're looking for what's this point right here, what's this point up here, what's this point right here, and what's this point right here. So now this is what we're going to do here. If you go to your menu, you're going to find the analog, hit menu from where you are in grass, and you should find, oops, sorry, tools. And you should find analyze a graph. And the way I'm going to analyze this is I'm going to inter analyze the intersection. 
So far, so good. And it says at the bottom, it says pick the graph. I'm going to choose the red one first. And then the blue one. And this says lower bound, upper bound, Dylan. They're looking for x values, not y values. So what I'm looking for x values that trap the curve in there, right? So the calculator knows where to look. So I'm going to say don't look any lower than here as far as an x value. And don't look any higher than here. And there's that point. Okay? You can do the same thing again. Analyze the graph. Intersection. I'm going to take the, the green one, Dylan, and the blue one. Same thing, lower bound, so I want x values less than the intersection point, so that's here. And the upper bound is x values higher than the intersection point. Yeah? That make, that's pretty good, isn't it? And then, again, going to go up and analyze one more, t two more times, right? Intersection, ask me what graph, the red one and the blue one again. See, look, if you had done the red one and the blue one, if you had said upper and lower bound, if you had said, that if you had got these mixed up and you said this is the lower bound and over here is the upper bound, it would have given you this intersection, wouldn't it? So it's really, what it's doing is it's really focusing in on where it's talking about. So um, we said the red graph, Dylan, right? And then the second one is the blue one. It doesn't matter what order I do it in. But see, it says lower bound there, Dylan. It's looking for x in, the x interval on, on which you want it to search. So I want it to search. I, and it doesn't have to be precise. I'd like it to be, you know, close, I guess. But somewhere in here, I guess, is good. Uh oh, look. I accidentally, that's cool. I'm glad this, I'm not glad it happened, but no, ex, uh, no intersection found. I accidentally double tapped it. So I had the upper and lower bound both were on the left hand side of the intersection. So I have to try that again. So go back to analyze the graph here and look for an intersection here. And then once the two graphs don't, so the red one and the blue one, I guess. And then here's my lower bound. And then, and they don't have to be really, really close. And, you shouldn't be surprised about that, right? Because this graph is symmetrical. So what do you, like, Ryan, what's this point going to be here? Here's a clue, seriously. Positive 4.8, negative 2, I would think, wouldn't you? Do the same thing again. Just hit Analyze Graph. Hit, holy schmack me. doesn't matter which, what do you grab them in. So I'm going to take the green one, Dylan, and then I'll take the blue one, I guess. And now upper and lower bound, remember it's, an x value to the left of the point you want, and then an x value to the right of the point that you want, and no surprise, right? Is that okay? All right. I think we're going to try one more, but I think we might be out of time here. 